Bob Hunger, our extension wheat pathologist, joins us now. And Bob, growers kind of starting to think about fall planting. Before they do that, though, let's talk about some of the challenge from this past wheat growing season. Well, this last season, uh, there was uh, one of the most extreme diseases we had were uh, some of the the mite transmitted viruses, particularly wheat streak mosaic virus. It was widespread across the panhandle, northwestern, western Oklahoma, southwestern, and even moved down state. We found some of it here in uh, Payne County as well. Talk about how that uh is transmitted, how it spreads. Okay, uh, yeah, because this is a key time to control it for the, the next season, for the 2017-2018 season, because uh, the, the virus and the mites survive not just on wheat, but on lots of alternative crops, uh, grassy crops, such as sorghum and corn, but also a lot of the grassy weeds that occur in fields. And so it's uh, imperative that that green bridge that connects the one season to the new season gets broken and, and killed off so that the virus and the mites cannot survive. Give us an idea of what we're seeing here in this field that we're in. We have some examples right here. Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, this, this was actually the variety demo uh, plots on the Stillwater campus. And uh, uh, in this field, after it was harvested, of course, there's some seed that falls to the ground. But there's also grassy weeds and dicotyledonous, dicotyledonous weeds that come up. And you can see both of those here. It's the grassy weeds that are of concern with uh, wheat streak mosaic virus. So if you look down here at the ground, you'll see a lot of grassy weeds in here. And this field was sprayed uh, two or three days ago with Roundup and uh, 2,4-D to kill these weeds. And so that means that they'll be dead for a good two or more weeks before this field is planted again with wheat. And so you'll be breaking that green bridge where there won't be any alternative hosts or volunteer wheat for the mites and the virus to survive on. So now's kind of the time to look at, look at what those management <clears throat> options are and, and get the field prepared. And definitely, because it's those fields where there's a lot of uh, volunteer wheat and where there's the alternative weeds, grassy weeds in it, that harbor the mites and the virus. Those are the fields that are likely going to be affected in spring of 2018 because you get the fall infection with the mites and the transmitting the virus to that uh, seedling wheat. Then that seedling wheat will have the virus growing in it through the winter and then when the temperatures warm up, all of a sudden you're gonna have uh, a field that is pretty well covered with plants affected by wheat streak mosaic virus and that can be extremely damaging as a lot of people found out this year. It's very important for your own fields, but also for neighboring fields. Be a good neighbor, be sure to control those grassy weeds and volunteer wheat so that uh, we'll helpfully help manage uh, wheat streak mosaic virus next spring. Because we can almost guarantee it's gonna be windy, right? Regardless Definitely. of what the weather's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, the mites will blow, yeah. One final question in terms of selecting wheat varieties. Is there anything at this stage? I know there's a lot of research that goes on with the wheat improvement team that can help. Uh, yes, that's uh, definitely one of the high priorities of Dr. Carver. Uh, there, there are some resistance genes to the, the virus and there's some resistance genes to the curl mites. Those aren't absolute genes. They're not, they don't offer complete protection, but he's working on incorporating those. Uh, there are some varieties around that have uh, these resistance genes in them, but most of them uh, are not well adapted to Oklahoma. Okay, Bob, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, Linda. We'll see you soon.